Why is the bit error rate the same for BPSK and QPSK? And why is it that sometimes you see it plotted where it's not the same? So let's try to understand what's going on. Here we've got binary phase shift keying, and the constellation diagram shows two constellation points. And if you want more information about constellation diagrams, check out another video on this channel. The details are in the description below. Here we have one of these points representing a digital zero and the other point representing a digital one. And of course, this axis here is the cos axis, which means that you are modulating a cos waveform at the carrier frequency. This other axis here is the sine axis. The power is going to be the square of the amplitude. So here we say that the power equals a squared. And now let's think about it from the point of view of the bits. What is the energy that we are devoting to sending one of these bits? Well, the energy per bit is equal to the power times the time period over which you send it. So the energy per bit for BPSK is A squared times T. All right, now let's think about the errors. When are we gonna be making errors? So let's think about the case when you're sending a digital zero. If the noise was bigger than A, then your received value would be on the right-hand side of this plane, and then you would make an error. So we can write that down as a probability. The probability of making a bit error, in this case, is the same as the probability of making a symbol error, because these are the symbols that we are sending to represent the bits, and that equals the probability that the noise is bigger than A. And since it's symmetric, the same holds if you're sending a digital one. So now let's think about QPSK. In this case, we have four constellation points, and the way I've drawn them here is such that the power equals two times A squared. Because when we take the square of these values here, square root two A, we get two times A squared. In this case, we are sending two bits per symbol. So I've drawn it for the case where there is twice the power compared to BPSK. Let's think about it from the point of view of the energy in the bits. So in this case, the way I've drawn it here, the energy in the bits equals the power, two times A squared, times the time over which we're gonna send it, which is the same as for BPSK. But now, because there are two bits every time we send a symbol, we divide by two to find the energy per bit. So in this case, it equals A squared T, which we can see is exactly the same value as we had for BPSK. And this is really the crucial importance in terms of why the bit error rate can be plotted to be the same for BPSK and QPSK. If I'd drawn the QPSK constellation where the power was the same, then these four constellation points would be at A and negative A, and here again, A and negative A, and we would have a different energy per bit. So when you're thinking about bit error rates and comparing between schemes, you need to be careful to think, are you plotting with respect to the signal to noise ratio, which would be the powers and keeping them the same, or are you plotting with respect to the energy per bit and keeping them the same? And what we can find is that the bit error rates are the same if you are considering the same energy per bit, which is what I'm showing here. So let's see why that's the case and let's see why it comes out to be the same in this case. So let's remember that we're sending two bits and I'll draw down here an example of the bits that we might map to these points. So we might map 0, 0 to this one, 0, 1 to this, 1, 0 here, and 1, 1 over here, for example. Now let's think about how we're gonna make errors in this case. Well, in this case, the boundaries for decision-making are at 45 degrees. So I'm gonna just indicate those here with dotted lines. And what we also can know is that this is representing a, another possible basis function. I uh, haven't shown them exactly 45 degree lines, they're supposed to be 45 degree lines, I've just sketched them in there. So these are certainly though orthogonal the way I've drawn them. 
So let's remember this basis function here in this direction here is a cos waveform of omega t at the carrier frequency. This basis function here is cos omega t plus pi on 4. And likewise, this one here is sine omega t, and this one here is going to be sine omega t plus pi on 4. So all we've done is to rotate the basis functions. And then we can realize that noise, which is independent in orthogonal basis functions, it will also be independent in these basis functions, these ones that are at 45 degrees. OK, so now let's think about the, the probability of making an error. Let's say take this one. If we were sending a 1 and a 1, we would make an error if the noise took us to the other side of this boundary here and we'd be closer to this constellation point. Or if the noise took us to the other side of this boundary here and we'd be making this constellation point up here. And what's the distance of these? Well, because these are at square root of 2a and negative square root of 2a, this distance here is a. So we would be making an error We would, if we we're sending this one, but uh, instead we were to make an error over here. That would be because the noise in this basis function, in the sine basis function, is bigger than a. But at the same time, if we were picking this one, the noise in the other basis function would be less than a. Then we would be in this quadrant here. And likewise, and so we can see that as being the probability that one of the noise values in one of the basis functions is bigger than a, but the other noise value in the other basis function is less than a. And the probability of both of those happening at the same time is the multiplication of those two probabilities. So now what's this two here? And when we're working out this formula for the probability of bit error, well, this is going to happen for the probability of picking this constellation point, if you were sending this one, and it's also the probability of picking this constellation point. So that probability there gets multiplied by two to account for this constellation point and this one, the possibility of making errors here and here. What's this half that I've written? Well, interestingly, we can notice that if we made an error and if the noise put us into this area here, this region here, then actually, although we've made a symbol error, we've only made one bit error out of the two bits because the first bit is the same. So we're actually only making half the bit errors when we make a symbol error. And the same thing over here, if, we'd, if the noise had put us into this quadrant here, then likewise, the seconds bit would be the same. So we're only making half a bit error every time we make a symbol error. And of course, there's also a possibility that both of the noises are bigger than A, and we would be in this quadrant over here. In this case, the probability that noise is bigger than A squared but in this case, you're going to make two bit errors because it's whichever example you think about, it's all symmetric. If you move into the opposite quadrant, both of the bits are in error. So now we can see this two cancels this one, this two cancels this one. We take a probability that noise is bigger than A out the front and we get the probability of noise being less than A plus the probability of noise being bigger than A inside the brackets. This probability equals one. And so the overall probability of making a bit error for QPSK is exactly the same as it was for the probability of making it a bit error for BPSK. In the scenario where we're comparing the same energy per bit. So if you're plotting your bit error rates as a function of energy per bit divided by the noise power, which is often the way it is done, bit error rate, then the two curves are the same. If you plotting your bit error rate as a function of signal to noise ratio, then this is related to the power. And clearly the power is different in these two examples. So then the curves would be different. So it, the answer to the question, why is the bit error rate the same? Well, it's it is the same for this reason here if you're comparing the same energy per bit, but not signal to noise ratio. And just one final point to make is it might sound now that it's obvious that if you compare the same energy per bit, 
then you're going to get the same bit error rate. However, don't be tricked. This property only holds for BPSK and QPSK. The fact that you can double the power and double the data rate is not a common result. It's only in this case. The important factor here is that you are effectively with QPSK using a whole second degree of freedom, which was not used in BPSK. But actually there are only two degrees of freedom, a sine and a cos. There are no other orthogonal waveforms. So once you've gone from BPSK to QPSK, you're not gonna get the doubling in future. So when you move to 16 QAM and so on, you will get an increase in the bit error rate. So if this video has helped you to understand this more, please give the video a like. It helps others to find the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the description below. You'll find a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.